So we're going to open up the service manual here to page, let's see, page 15. And this is going to have the most important schematic in here, or the one anyway that uh, we're concerned with because it shows the direct wiring of the motor. This block here in the schematic represents the motor. And you can see that it has a clockwise winding and a counterclockwise winding so we can wire it to spin in either direction. And coming from over here, um, actually let's start by pointing out that uh, the motor connection itself looks like it has one, two, uh, three, four connections or three wires. And this one here is gonna be to ground so we're gonna expect that to be green with a yellow trace just like we saw earlier. Uh, the second pin, pin number two, is going to be connected to your live wire from your AC outlet. And <clears throat> we have a run capacitor here. And then over here we can see that this wire is going to connect back to the neutral wire of the AC outlet. We don't even really need to worry about this kind of part of the schematic. We're just going to basically run our neutral wire through one or the other pins of the capacitor to our motor. One pin to ground and then uh, one pin over to our live wire. So, just as we expected, there's going to be this green wire here for ground, and that's green with the yellow trace. And then over here we have the red wire and the yellow wire, and you can't see this on the camera, but these two wires are making their way back to the run capacitor. So these two wires are going to choose whether the motor is going to spin in a clockwise or in a counterclockwise direction. And then here we have this white wire with a black trace, and that's going to be our live wire. And this wire isn't, it's significant, or it's important to mention that if you're going to add a switch to this circuit, or you're going to have to add a switch to this circuit so that you can turn the spinner on and off. And whatever you use for a switch, whether it's just like a toggle switch, like a light switch, if you're using a, some kind of a mushroom button or a timer switch, you're going to want to break the circuit on the live side of the circuit. You don't want to break the circuit on the neutral side, which is where our capacitor will be. You want to break the circuit on the live side of the circuit. And so again, white wire, black trace connected to this terminal block that plugs into the motor. That's connected to your live side of your AC circuit and your switch should be on the live side of the circuit. Okay. Let's see if we can find the run capacitor. Here's a better shot here where we can see both the run capacitor, which is here. And here's the motor. Along with our terminal block end. And if we look at the run capacitor, we can see over here our yellow wire, which traverses across through this harness to the motor, and our red wire. So we're gonna take a look at that and see if we can make some decisions about what we're gonna pull out and throw away and what we're gonna keep. Here's a closer shot of that run capacitor and you can see coming from this wire harness here, we can find our yellow, red, green, and white wires. And again, this yellow wire looks like it's sort of making its way to this pin here on the run capacitor. And then the red wire coming from the motor is making its way to this pin. So I think if we pull that terminal end off here, it sort of exposes uh, a couple of pins here on the capacitor. And for the capacitor, you want to be a little bit careful. Uh, 
Similar to a battery, a capacitor is a device or a component which can store energy. And so I guess what makes it a little bit different from a battery is that a capacitor can give up that energy very quickly. It's not as limited as a battery when it's delivering power. So be careful not to touch anything across those two terminals or you will get a pretty nasty shock. In fact, they usually suggest that you should wait a good, I don't know, a couple of minutes to an hour before you service a capacitor. And there's a couple of tricks you can find. Um, maybe I'll try to put a link in the video for how you would purposely discharge a capacitor. But for now, let's just say, be careful of those two terminal ends. And this one's got a nice sort of plastic enclosure so that it, it would actually be tough to touch them both at the same time. But um, a capacitor is something that you wanna have a little bit of respect for. They can be a little bit dangerous.